Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media, and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. I have a guest today, Laura Jane Layton, who's gonna talk to us about self-care from the inside out. So welcome today, Laura Jane. Thank you so much for having me. I just, I've been looking forward to this for weeks. So here we are. (laughs) All right, great. Let me read your bio. So Laura Jane Layton is a recovering corporate workaholic. There's a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Her her work-related stress resulted in neglecting her self-care. Her message is a beacon of hope for women. And I think this is useful for men too. Seeking to transform that inner bully voice into their best friend. She has a very warm and relatable approach. And she guides listeners towards lasting change, inspired by her own journey of self-discovery, and I'm going to say transformation. So welcome, Laura Jane. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So beyond what I just read for the listeners, uh, what else motivated you to focus more on that learning how to do self-care from the inside out? Oh, you know, I went to work every day as pretty as I could be, and I took care of, made sure my hair looked good, my nails looked great, my eyelashes were nice and long and pretty, but I was falling apart on the inside, and I was masking it and hiding it and forgetting to do all those things for me until I ended up in the hospital and you know, it was like, okay, what can I do? What do I need to do? So this does not happen again. And it was take that step back. And what is, where are my pipes leaking? Where is the hoarder putting all this stuff in the closets? You can't see what are those things that I need to start purging or changing in my life to move forward? Because I didn't want another episode of having to be fixed by somebody. I wanted to stay fixed. And so I really started focusing on that internal dialogue to remove those limiting beliefs, to remove those things that were holding me back. I didn't look broken on the outside, but I couldn't function properly on the inside. Yeah, I know a lot of people until they hit a crisis, they do sort of put on that happy face regardless of how they're doing inside. They might be building up stress, discouragement, depression, or even resentment because they're not finding that balance of self-care. So I guess we sort of started to touch on my next question, which is, well, why is self-care important? You know, I, I can relate it to so many things, but let's go for a car today. If I don't take that moment, I can commute to work back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and I can keep going. But if I run out of gas, I'm not going anywhere. Or I can fill up every week, but I cannot, I can end up not ever putting oil in my car and I'll blow a rod and then my car needs to have a whole engine replaced. And so there's all these things that you can have the shiniest, prettiest, cleanest car on the road but it might not work tomorrow when you go to get in it. And so if we don't start looking at those things that happen or that we're doing to ourselves on the inside, we're going to break down and need to be repaired. 
And some of us get to go 200,000 miles before it happens. And others, it happens at 100,000. And so I can't, my experience was my life. And everybody has their own limits to how far they can go without taking those internal things. And why do a whole overhaul when just general maintenance is going to keep you going? Um, but it's things that we just overlook. We think I can keep going. Oh, the lights on low. I think I can make it 40 more miles. Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of being proactive and going, Hmm, I think I'm low on gas. Let me go ahead and fill it up now. Just think how much less stress it is. If you just do it now, then if you wait until that light goes on, you go, Oh my gosh, that next gas station is 50 yeah. miles away. Well, yeah. I make it. And now it's a crisis. So it's, yes. Yep. So how do you stay conscious of those things? And yeah. so I started changing my dialogue inside to be kinder, to quit beating myself up, to, to take care of my internal thoughts, mm -hmm. because those are the ones that actually end up affecting our ex, you know, how we talk to other people. And I wanted to be kind to everybody, not just me. Those are good points. And uh, my listeners are, I think, aware of the absolute necessity of watching that self-talk, the, the inner dialogue. So what do you tell to people who say, isn't that selfish to do self-care? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is not selfish because if you can't function, you can't help anybody. But when you're at your optimum, when you are running full speed ahead, you've got the energy and time and the peace of mind to do it. Have you ever had to go help somebody and you're so scattered? Like, oh my gosh, I've got to do this and this and this and this and this. And you forgot your own priorities and you went and helped him. And then something major happens. And you go, oh my gosh, that was not as important. And I broke this other commitment. And it's when we can say, I've got the energy to do this because I took care of myself, because I filled myself up with gas, mm -hmm. because I did the 30,000 mile checkup and found out I had some loose belts that needed to be fixed. And you fixed them. You can keep going. But what if you never fixed that belt? What if you never took the time to look? Your car would stop. And all these unselfish acts you did just put you down. And now yeah. you can't do anything. You can't even take care of your family at that point. Yeah. And yeah. so if you don't take care of you, you don't have the energy to help anybody. And so why would anybody think it was selfish? And I know I used to think it was selfish. So I understand why. Yeah. So using your um, analogy of the car, most of us have some other people in the car. So if we're not doing that maintenance and our car breaks down, those people end up, you know, they're going to suffer because of our lack of balance and self-care, aren't they? Absolutely. And if you think about all the other things we're carrying, some of that baggage we carry, do you know you get optimum gas mileage when you're not pulling a load? <laughs> and so you got all this baggage with you and all these things that you're toting around because you got to take them. That's decreasing your ability from point A to point B. And so as we get rid of the things that aren't serving us, then we have more energy and more time that we can do and take those other people along in our car. That's right. That's right. So I loved all of the information you had on your blog. Uh, you have a very lengthy blog on self-care from the inside out that really just beautifully explains all the different aspects of that self-care. So I, I was reviewing it today uh, to be familiar with how you approach things. And I loved what you had to say about authentic relationships. Do you want to like explain a little bit more to the listener how self-care is very closely related to those authentic relationships? It's when we are not true to ourselves that we're miserable in relationships. When I can't tell you that 
oh, I can't do that because I'm afraid. And I just change people's minds or reroute what's going on. If I can't be truthful, I've just hidden parts of me. Mm -hmm. And when you have that honest relationship, that relationship where you truly appreciate one another for their flaws, for their, uh, and when I say flaws, it, those are things that trigger me in a negative mm -hmm. way. Yeah. So the toilet seat stayed up. <laughs> who made that rule anyway? Yeah. You know, you know, like who made these rules that we have enforcing on everybody? And it's those expectations. And when you can communicate them and not just complain, it becomes a true authentic relationship because you understand each other. You understand where you support one another and you understand where you can stand alone. And that's when it's truly an honest relationship and not just, you know, people say you've got to give a hundred percent. If you're not a hundred percent yourself, you can't give it. If you're only 75% because you're not taking care of yourself, you can only give 75%. Complaining seems to be something that women can fall into pretty easily. We can nitpick people because they're not doing the things the way we would do them or the way we want them to do it. And, you know, I believe there's right and wrong, but if you're not being abused, Maybe you can overlook something, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it, it's not it's not hurting anything. I, and I'll just tell a secret. My husband loves to leave his socks on the floor. Okay. You know, it drives me nuts. Just pick them up and take them in the other room. But you know what? I have not complained about that. And we've been married 35 years. I haven't complained about that for 30 years because you know what? I can pick up those socks. And why make a relationship frustrating? I'm sure he'll pick them up eventually if I wanted to leave them there that long. But it's up to us to just fill in those gaps. And why ruin an absolutely beautiful relationship over a pair of socks on the floor? Yeah, if that's the worst thing he's doing, <laughs> I think I would, you know, major on the majors. And if most of what we appreciate about a friend or a partner or a child is good, and there's certain, you know, I have certain flaws um, and some of it, I would like to be different, but I know this is how I am. I'll try to do better, but I can be a little like irritable. Um, I might accidentally swear when I miss a shot that I think was easy and I feel bad about it, but it's like, I'm Italian. This stuff happens, you know, so I'll keep working on it. But we we have to be OK with the fact that other people are human. They're never going to be perfect. If something really bothers us, you know, we can kindly say, you know, it really hurts my feelings when this, that or the other. I would really appreciate it if, you know, so we can be gentle when we need to say something. But if, if we aren't grateful for all the good things about the people, our friends, our relatives, if we, if we aren't grateful, if we aren't reasonable, then we're going to be pushing other people away. And it doesn't really, it doesn't do that much good to be happy with yourself if you're pushing everybody else away, right? You know, I really, <laughs> I really try to look at what was good in this. You know, what did I gain that I loved about this and quit focusing on the negative. I was at the hairdresser not too long ago and the lady in the chair next to me was complaining constantly the whole time I was there about her trip she took. They went on a cruise and they went to these beautiful islands and she complained about everything. And I thought, I wonder if she missed the beautiful sunset. I wonder if she missed that moment when her and her children or husband, whoever was with her, bonded for that moment. Why focus on those things that didn't go well instead of all the things that went amazing? And I, I thought, 
oh my gosh, I am going to do better at making sure when I share a story, it's those beautiful things. Because why do I want to share the misery with everybody when life can be so beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to, we don't want to dump on things that, okay, maybe they're not perfect, but there's a lot of good and we're going to encourage other people when we're looking for the things to be grateful about, to appreciate about other people. And, you know, a lot of that is just choice, isn't it? It's just what we choose to focus on. If someone is just starting to learn to do better self-care and to talk to themselves more reasonably, what are a couple of things that you think would really help people get started on this journey? Pay attention to the words you use. Because when we use, it always is like this, or it never Uh, happens. You're putting a lot of limiting thoughts in your head. And that's why I do my Monday challenges on my podcast, because I want people to find little things they might be able to change in the way they speak to themselves. Because as we speak to ourselves and learn how to be nice, we're nice to everybody. One of my first challenges is stop saying sorry. Say things like, I understand where you're coming from. I see that my words were not clear or they weren't helping you. And go with, I'm doing better I used to say sorry to the wall, but you walk into a board meeting and you go, you're late and you go, sorry, I'm late. Everybody now knows you are late. But if you talked in and you said, thank you for starting without me, or thank you for waiting, it's a part of gratitude that's coming out instead of shame. And it's that lit one word, one word takes you from a point of shame to a point of power. And that's where we start. What is the word that you are using? Because we all use different ones that is limiting you. And how do we switch that to empower you? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I say we start is self-reflect. Yeah, I can't tell you how many, well, I'm sure you know, how many people, especially women, apologize for everything. And that's coming out of that place of feeling shame, feeling inadequate, or fear of how, um, if someone's going to get angry with them, if they don't agree 100% with everything. So again, you want to be in a safe relationship if you're going to be open, if you're going to be authentic. If it's not safe, then maybe you just don't say anything. But, um, But that the way we talk to ourselves and starting to be aware of places where we are going into shame and uh, self-rejection. And that's not necessary. We we don't have to live in that place. Maybe there are, I'm sure there's reasons people got there, but we don't have to stay there, do we? Absolutely not. And as we learn to take our own power back, we shine. I mean, just think, I mean, just that one about sorry, just think about the woman that walks into your office and go, oh, thank you for waiting for me versus sorry, I'm late. What do you feel? What do, What is the difference you feel inside about that person? And you go, oh, this person's thankful. You know, there's, there's a positive point in that. And as we share the positivity, it radiates throughout everybody around. We waste a lot of time uh, apologizing unnecessarily for things that are not moral issues. It's like, hey, you know, uh, let me tell you what happened on the way here. And then you have a little story to tell. So um, I don't know if you I like to look for the humor in things Um, that just helps me not get too bogged down in the parts of life that are difficult And, uh, but that self-talk, we keep coming back to that, don't we? And I know you encourage people to do that self-reflection using a journal. I am huge on that so that we start to pay attention to what we're thinking, what we're saying to ourselves. And 
I think journaling, Laura Jane, is one of the most effective ways to like recognize it. And sometimes when we write it down, I know I think, I don't even really believe that. Why am I saying it to myself? That is great because I do the same thing. Like, I don't believe that. Look, I'll fix it. Yeah, I love the practice of my gratitude journal in the morning and my self-reflection at night. Because okay. if I start the day with thankfulness, the focusing on all the things I love and then reflecting on the things that I might want to change at night, just for me, makes a beautiful day. That's a really good idea. The, um, the starting off with the positive is really important. I know uh, people that clients I work with that start off the day super anxious. It's like you have to interrupt that right off the bat. Don't wait for it to wear off. Don't try to distract yourself. Address it directly. And I think that gratitude is one way to interrupt it, isn't it? I think it's a beautiful way to focus on the be the good part of what's going to happen. Yeah, and it's not denial. Denial is we pretend none of this is real. What you're talking about is what am I going to focus on? How am I going to look at this? This is real. It's happening. You know, we all struggle with different things. But what's our focus going to be? What's going to leave our lips when we're talking to another person? And are we going to be building an atmosphere that encourages everybody? Or are we going to be the one tearing down, like you said? So I know we're just kind of scratching the surface because you have tons and tons and tons of practical suggestions for people, even in the one blog I read, and I know you have quite a few on your website. I'll put a link to your website um, and you have a podcast that's the Laura Jane Layton Show. And how else can people find out more about you, Laura Jane? You know, the website is the perfect place, but on any social media that I'm on, I'm Laura Jane Layton. So it's very okay. easy to find me. Okay, that makes it easy. Thanks so much for, you know, the things you're sharing today and making yourself vulnerable about some of the things that are difficult for you. And I appreciate how practical you are in the way that you talk about this subject. I try to make it easy because we like easy. <laughs> That's right. If it's easy, it's more likely to happen, right? Thank you for being my guest today and um, blessings on you for the different things that you are juggling right now. Thank you appreciate it and have a wonderful day too.